Hack and Direct. I'm here to talk to you today about spinning. And before we get started on spinning, let me tell you a little bit of background of what actually goes into roving. Uh, this is alpaca roving, and the word roving, basically, all it means is that it's already processed fiber. So this is off of alpaca. It has been processed into this nice long band. This has been, this is a merino tussa silk, which is also silk from silkworms and merino from wool, and it's been washed and carded. And all carding does is it puts the fibers, these little look like dog combs, and you brush them back and forth, and they cause all of the fibers to go in the same direction. So you get this nice, smooth texture. This is Corindale, and it's obviously dyed a beautiful turquoise. It also comes in a natural color. And again, it's been washed and carded, ready for you to spin. Now what spinning is, is it's taking this fiber, which has really no strength. It, it, it just kind of falls apart. You wouldn't want to wear this. Um, and what it does is it causes these fibers. The fibers have a scale on them, a very like a, like a fish scale. And these little fish scales will interlace. They hook with each other once you twist it around. And this kind of the same concept for felting as well. And we'll all, another video I'll show you a little bit about felting. And all you're doing is you're spinning these and you're hooking them together to give the fiber strength. So yeah, that's not going to fall apart. Whereas over here, it's going to come right undone. And so what I'm going to show you today is a drop spindle. And this is what I teach all my students on. I'm an art teacher at a local middle school. And I start them off with, on drop spindles before I'd ever even think about them on a spinning wheel. And what a drop spindle does is, again, it puts spin twist into this roving. And this is a uh, spindle from Cascade, and it's called Mount Shuksan. And they named them after uh, mountains in the area. This is a um, beautiful birch and cherry. It's about an ounce to a one and three eighths of an ounce. You really want a very lightweight spindle. You don't want a heavy boat anchor because the word drop spindle, can I emphasize the word drop? It's gonna drop to the ground, especially when you're first starting out. So what I've done is I started off and I made what's called a leader cord. And you could even take a already done fiber. You could already take a little and tie it on the end. And then literally what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook it around. Here's a little joint, a little notch here and a little pin here. And what you do is you're gonna twist and roll that end of the spindle down in here from the, your knee up to your thigh, okay? And that's gonna put the twist in this direction. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up, which is called the sheep gate. It's a little triangular area here. And you open up and you let this spin or the twist travel up. Let me show you again. I'm gonna wind it on the cuff. This is called the cuff in here. And then here we go. I went up and notice how I'm pulling down. This is called drafting out. And the spin is literally traveling up the fiber. Do you see it traveling up? And I always keep, notice again, I want you to see really carefully this little triangle right here. Always keep that triangle open. And I use my thumb in the back to gauge that. Because if the spin gets up into here, that's it. You're going to really destroy your gauge of your fiber. You want to keep it all consistent. And then you're going to wind it up. And then when you're all done and you've filled your cup, what you can do is go back in and ply it if you want, or you can have a single strand. This would be just a single strand. What I do from here is I roll it off into a knitting knotty, and then I would set the twist in a nice hot water, not to aggravate it though, just gently set it in, and then I'm ready to knit. If I, like for example, when I spun this turquoise Corindale, I did go back and I plied it. And all plying is, and you can see it's already starting to kind of come onto itself, would be going the other direction from the hip to the knee. And you'd be spinning the opposite direction to get that nice ply. And we can talk about that on another time. Here's what you can do with it. Here is a knitted um, little, looks like almost a table runner to me. Now this Corindale is a little coarser than the Merino. The Corindale is around a 20, um, 26 to a 27 range 
And again, when we talk about microns, I'm talking about the fineness of the fiber. The larger the number, the coarser the fiber. The smaller the number, the finer the fiber. So you can see the merino tussa, which again is a merino, which is wool, and silk blend is around, oh, a 21 to a 23, whereas your baby alpaca is in those 20s, the low 20s, 20 to 23 in there. So you're gonna have much finer fibers. Here is what the merino tussa looks like spun up. I did it in about a fingering weight, and then here's the garnet. This is, uh, or sorry, this is garnet. This is cranberry in the merino tessa. And this is what I spun up in a worsted way. This is four ounces of fiber, which I put in two balls for you. This is four ounces as well. So when you order a four ounce little bag, this is how much fiber you get. And what I think for me, that's around 500 yards, the way I spin for a fingering and then maybe a little less for this. So this could be a very simple shawl, um, scarf as well as maybe uh, maybe eight ounces of this would make a great pair of socks. So enjoy your fiber.